Give me one second there. Okay. It's been so long since we have been together. The Wisdom Wednesday weekly webinar series from your friends in arts education and experiences common time took a hiatus for the summer because like many of the educators we're talking to today, I too am an educator and I enjoyed my time with my family and I hope you did too. But we're back with Common Times weekly webinar series, Wisdom Wednesday, where we give you trending tips, tricks, and information that have to do with the arts, arts education, and providing wonderful, amazing virtual arts experiences to learners and arts lovers all around the world with CommonTime.online. That's also the name of our website. We're trying something new with the Wisdom Wednesdays and keeping them short and digestible. I'm thinking 15 to 10 to 15 minutes, and they're usually been about an hour, so let's get right into it. Today's webinar is about how to create a wonderful beginning of the school year provocation in your arts classes using Common Time. Um, provocations are one of my favorite tools for introducing new concepts or new topics in your classroom. Essentially, a provocation is an unstructured, um, student-led activity that only exists to provoke thought only exist to provoke thought. Now it says student-led, but oftentimes it's going to be teacher-guided. If you are doing a unit on shapes in the primary, obviously you're going to give your students something in regards to shapes. But a provocation could look like um, a sensory table full of rocks where the students are able to just feel and touch. And maybe you provoke the student to ask questions. You push them to inquire into that experience they're having. But a provocation in simple terms is an activity that provokes thought, provokes wonder, provokes bewilderment in a, in a student in a student. Okay, so what are some of the benefits of using a live cultural experience as a provocation? Number one, we all know from my many talks that bringing in a live teaching artist from, in, from over 30 countries with the Common Time platform that specializes in music, dance, art, and drama allows your students a unique opportunity to use their international mindedness to build real concrete connections to their learning. Because as we all know, when you um, meet someone in an experience, it's kind of the difference between um, you know, taking one of those online courses in college where you just read articles and you posted the discussion post versus being in the classroom and engaging with that teacher. Obviously, online classes like that have their place, but that face-to-face -face engagement, I think, is what we as humans live for. And when you add that dynamic, the international mindedness, the direct connection to artists that are expertise and teaching and practic practicing, excuse me, in these fields, when you marry that with the beauty and the wonder of a provocation, you end up with this this hodgepodge cultural experience that can just spawn so much inquiry, so much thought, um, even down to who is this guy that's in my classroom? Who is this lady? Who is this person that came in? Where is India? How is this person talking to us from there? You know, even just the concept of using our platform in your classes is a provocation in itself. So when you marry those two ideas, you get something that can be super engaging, but also very impactful. And also, it's kind of like a glue that really makes the purpose of the provocation stick. It makes that experience stick to that student through this live cultural experience with Common Time. So just some quick housekeeping for all the new people out there that are new to our company, uh, new to um, our platform. Welcome. My name is Michael. I'm not sure if I said that before. Got to get back in the routine. But essentially, Common Time is your home for virtual arts education and arts experiences. We are a booking platform that connects artists with educators, with individual learners, with 
excuse me, arts organizations in a seamless video conferencing style where you can experience arts events, arts educational experiences, and much more through our community with the touch of a button from the comfort of your own home or your own classroom, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, an arts experience is only one click away. Okay, now that we're done with the housekeeping, let's talk a little bit more about how we marry the idea of a provocation with the idea of that live cultural experience that a guest artist will bring into your classroom. So I kind of broke it down into our different disciplines. Our artists on Common Time operate in the visual arts, uh, theater, dance, and music. And I'll talk about visual arts first. So imagine you are doing a unit on watercolors and you could have an artist come in and maybe paint something, maybe demonstrate how watercolors work, maybe showcase some work that they have previously made and bringing in a professional visual artist to talk to your classes not only builds that connection, that concrete connection with the learning, but of course, we're building that career ideology as well. That's so important to many of our administrators as educators. How many professional artists do your art students know? I always ask that. So here's a specific provocation you could do with one of the many visual artists from around the world that are ready to come engage with you or your students right now in common time. You could do one of my favorite provocations, which is the sticky note provocation. With this, you present something to your students. In this case, we're presenting them with a live session. We're presenting them with a live session with our visual artist who's talking about watercolors. And essentially, you give each student a little stack, maybe five sticky notes, and at any time during the session, they are able to walk up to the screen or to the wall or to your bulletin board or to their desk, and they can write a question, a memory, an idea, or an observation any one of those things on their sticky note and post it up to the board. At any time, they can get up and do this. Now, um, this is really cool because when your students post an observation, you're able to assess prior knowledge and this provocation can guide your teaching. Maybe your students write, oh, I already know about watercolors. Maybe half of them write that. Maybe you delete your first week of your unit and you start on week two because they already know what watercolors are. You can find that out from this type of live cultural provocation. You have them um, talk about a memory. Maybe with that memory also enlightens you on the student's prior knowledge. You can have them come up with an idea. This can help you differentiate your product. Maybe each student, if they come up with an idea of what they could do with watercolors, maybe that idea at the beginning becomes their assessment at the end, and now you're differentiating the product that your students are going to produce and allowing them to show learning in their own way. When you have your students do the sticky note provocation, when they ask a question, that can help you guide kind of where you need to go in the unit based on student interest. So now with the provocation, you're able to differentiate again. All of your students, they notice that when the artists combined the two colors, it went something crazy happened. Half of your class asks questions on the sticky note about mixing colors. So now you can differentiate that to your class and to your specific students. Maybe you do a centers. Maybe half the kids are doing color mixing in a center, and maybe the other half of the kids are doing something else. Maybe you invite that artist back for a second session, and you send the artist out with a laptop. You send a set of students over to the side in a little center, and they do color mixing with the artist. Now you're differentiating based on their interest and in all that data came from the provocation. For more advanced students, um, and even I guess with any students, you could incentivize their participation by making it a competition. Maybe who, however has the most you give each group maybe a different color. Whoever has the most sticky notes will 
get something. You incentivize them to provoke that thought, to be bewildered and ask questions, put their ideas. And if the competition doesn't work right, that's not the right vibe for you in your room. Another way that we can differentiate learning is with a challenge because everyone's going to respond in their own way to being challenged. Everyone responds to adversity differently. So you can challenge your students to ask a question only you can ask. Observe something only you can see and think of a memory only you can remember. This helps you differentiate, like we said before, where your students are personalizing their response to the provocation and they're thinking about how only they fit into it. Moving on to music. Maybe you could have a performer. We have maybe 40 professional musicians on the common time that are ready to come in and teach things in your classrooms like world music from several different cultures. And then in addition to that, all of our artists are expertise. They have expertise in their area. So if you need a low brass master class, a guitar lesson, a drum set lesson with a pro out in Hong Kong, all of those things are available for master classes, clinics, recitals, performance, you name it. You could have that musician come in and showcase a genre or style of music that you're going to study. Maybe you're studying um, Indian traditional music. So you bring in Pranoy to perform and talk about the tabla. Another provocation activity I like is called the jigsaw. And the jigsaw can be used in many different ways. But essentially, you separate your students into groups. And um, it's similar to the sticky note provocation, but maybe one student is or one group is jotting ideas about the instrument that's being used. They're only writing observations, memories, ideas and questions about the instrument. Then you have another group that's doing the same thing, but they are specifically talking about the music. Then after the session, when the provocation has almost ended, you have each group of students present their provoked thought. So now you have a full picture of the provocation, a full picture that was presented in pieces by two of the different classes. And this helps because it helps students, especially when you're dealing with something as a uh, transdisciplinary as in a fine art, it helps the students kind of focus their thought, focus their wonder, focus their provocation so they're not just all over the place. Provocations are supposed to be more free form, but I think a little bit of guidance never hurts, and especially depending on the age group of your students, helping them focus what they're looking at and thinking about can help. Then you combine those two focuses, and now your class has a full picture of thoughts, ideas, observations, and memories. For more advanced students in this music, you could even do like, for example, I'm an IB music teacher, and when my grade nines and tens have to learn how to analyze music. So for that class, if I wanted to do a provocation for them, I would get more specific and say, okay, group one, you are only writing down notes, ideas, thoughts, and memories about rhythms. Group two, about pitches. Group three, about um, the um, tonality. Group four about the emotional effect. And then when we combine all those together, like our jigsaw, that's why it's called jigsaw, the puzzle pieces come together. We have a full picture that's based in the elements of music, which is something that they're going to have to do at the end of their grade 10 year and even at the end of grade 9 year for their criteria A. So that's a great way to connect the provocation to the learning. Find out what your students know, don't know, what they're interested in, what they remember, ideas, thoughts, things like that. Okay, moving on to drama. Maybe you bring in an improv theater artist. We have an awesome one. Actually, two. And you have them do a session because you know with common time you can create custom sessions where you can tell the artist what you need artists also have pre-planned lessons where they tell you i'll come in and do a session on this and do these activities you can do that or you can say hey michael i really need my students to be able to do this this and this or hey michael in this unit we're learning about this can you tailor your experience 
Commons. Um, both of those options are available and used quite frequently at commentime.online. So you brought in the improv artists and they're doing a session on improv acting, um, focusing on emotions and feelings because you're going to be doing a unit in your drama class on emotions and feelings. So you do this provocation and you can have your students do another provocation strategy called the conceptual representation. That in layman's terms is getting the students to pick something else an object, a drawing, um, an object, something else that represents the concept or the content or the idea that they're going to be learning about. In theater, we call these props. So can your students respond to what they saw in the provocation by doing a conceptual representation and finding items in the room? Maybe you make it a show and tell where they bring items from home that um, represent some of the emotions that they learned about. Doing this, you can see exactly how students Students, how do they picture these emotions? What do they think about sadness? What do they think so-and-so is um, a particular emotion? And it also allows them the opportunity to connect with the emotions, which is going to give them insight into what the unit's going to be like. The provocation in addition to provoking thought, it's also like an advertisement for the unit without you saying, this this week we're learning about fractions, you know, and just like spelling it all out. You give them the provocation. Not only do you get all that juicy data from the thoughts and ideas and memories they present, not only can you differentiate your instruction based on their performance in this provocation, but the students also receive insight into what they're about to be doing which I think is super beneficial um, because I think humans like to want to tell the future. I think we maybe all can agree on that. And kids are no different. They want to know, what are we doing today? I have kids ask me in class every day. Um, I, I say, get out your instruments. The kids are holding a flute and they say, what are we doing today? I said, well, the fact that you're holding a flute should be a dead giveaway, but maybe I should have started that class with a provocation to help that student be prepared for what we're going to do. I thought that telling you to take out your instrument was enough to tell you that we're going to be playing, but I digress. We're here to grow. Okay. Next, we'll talk about dance. That's the last art form um, of the four that I'm mentioning today. Maybe you bring in an artist similar to um, our music example, just to introduce a new style of dance, teach some quick choreography to get the students engaged right at the top of the unit. Maybe you're going to do a unit on Irish river dancing. So you bring, um, you know, an Irish dancer to come in or a hip hop dancer, or a ballet, what have you. So here, one of my favorite provocation strategies is less intense as some of the others. It's a simple reflection. No post-it notes, no activity needed, just a simple reflection. And I like to guide it in this way is how I like to guide it. You can have your students reflect on the newness of this dance experience, but you can target it by having them reflect on how are my thoughts affected by this new experience? How was my body affected by this new experience? And how were my feelings affected by this new experience? Now, in the context of dance, I think this is really awesome because students are going to be able to tell themselves we're about to learn this type of dance. My thoughts were affected X, Y, Z. I'm going to need some coordination to be able to do this unit. Now they're already starting to mentally prepare and it's not a surprise when you start working on the new information. When they ask him, how are my feelings affected by this? We know that grit and learning something new can be very tough. And in the IB, we talk a lot about um, 
you know, like self-management skills, being how you think about yourself, how you engage with new materials, what mentally is going to need to take place for me to succeed in this unit. That's the type of thoughts that are going to come from a provocation like the one I'm describing to you now. And then, of course, the how did my body react to the newness of this experience that I was just provoked in? Um, what is it going to take for me physically in this dance class to complete this unit successfully? Oh boy, I my knees are weak, so I'm going to maybe have to focus on that. Then, of course, data, data, data. If half your class says my body is hurt by this experience, maybe you can differentiate that strategy by tiering your learning so that some of the other students have an easier starting spot or maybe you're doing some easier moves. Or maybe if all your students reflect that they're, they're depressed after this provocation, maybe you cancel the unit and do something else. And that's totally fine, too, because your action was student led. And anything student-led has to be okay. Um, obviously, not everything, okay? As long as it's educational, if it's student-led, it's got to be okay. Um, in closing, Common Time has a custom lessons feature where you can click an artist that is specializes in music, art, theater, dance from around the world, and you can fill out a little form telling them what you need. You can say, we're doing a unit on Ireland, and I see that you're a dancer. Can you connect what you love and know to what we're currently doing? And our teaching artists are the best at doing that just for you and your students. So if any of these provocations sound um, provocative to you, then consider going to commentime.online right now. Click on our artist tab. Find an artist that's working in a medium that your students would be okay with. And this goes for all subjects. We just had a little session with over 120 educators talking about how with Common Time you can actually integrate the arts into any subject. Your history, your math, your science. You go in the Common Time and you tell them what you're working on and that teaching artist will help deliver an engaging, insightful, virtual, cultural, artistic learning experience tailor-made for you, your students, your content, and the experience you are looking for. Once again, my name is Michael, and I want to remind you, excuse me, to head over to commentime.online slash events. We have some wonderful events coming up. We have um, one of our favorite Common Time artists, Adrian, who is a professional conductor, music director, composer, and arranger out in Europe. He's going to be hosting uh, four sessions four educators. Two of them are dealing with orchestral conducting, and two of them are dealing with band and choral arranging for all the music teachers out there who write their own music. This is a can't-miss opportunity, um, just simply for the networking potential of being able to meet with someone like this and have them on demand. Back in the day, it would take you a business class ticket, a red-level hotel room, and a per diem to get someone like that into your room, into your community, so take advantage. We also, for your instrumental music teachers, and we do more than music, we just like music this month. For your instrumental music teachers, we're having the first ever Common Time Woodwind Festival where we're going to have classes and sessions based on beginners and teachers of beginners since we're starting the school year, talking about flute, bassoon, and clarinet. Um, Flute and clarinet are two of the most popular instruments that are going to be played by hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of brand new kids this year. And bassoon is probably one of the instruments that is not as popular, but educators know the least about. So all three of these are must attend if you are a beginner or if you teach beginners. If you want to find me, you can email me, Michael, at Michael at CommonTime.online. And of course, info at CommonTime.online for our general mailbox. Find us on social media at CommonTime.online or some variation of that on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram. Um, and I think Twitter. So with that, 
We're going to try to keep this under 15 minutes next time, but I got under 25, and that's a big improvement from what we usually do. So once again, this has been your Wisdom Wednesday weekly webinar with Michael coming to you live from commentime.online. Thank you.